Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. A family member was telling me that some employers are uncomfortable with quiet people on the job. Now, as a quiet guy at the job, I usually don't say much. I come into the office, I may possibly say good morning to some coworkers and a supervisor, and I will keep most of my communications primarily focused to work-related tasks and getting tasks done. And some employers are uncomfortable with that kind of worker because they want to have somebody around who is social and will talk about personal things. Now, I don't really like talking about personal things on the job or getting too personal with people on the job because it can get a guy like myself jammed up at work. And that's one of the reasons why I stay silent on the job is because I need to be able to make a living and I don't want to put that living at risk by getting personal with people. Now, when I first come to a job, I usually just try to keep things professional and not get too personal. And the reason why I don't want to get too personal is, is because I don't know how long I'm going to be staying in this work environment. So I don't want to get too personal with people when I just get on a job because I want to feel out the work environment and I want to take a minute to assess who I'm working with and get to know how they work. So I don't really know anybody at this job yet. So I don't really want to get too personal with people because I don't know how I'm going to be able to work with these people. And I don't even know if I'm going to be at this job long enough to know how I'm going to be able to work the work dynamic. Because my primary focus when I'm on the job is learning the basic tasks at the job and learning how I'm supposed to communicate with my coworkers. So I don't really want to get too personal because I've been hired to take care of business and my first priority is to take care of business. Now I also don't like getting too personal with people on the job is because some people are workplace predators and when it comes down to your workplace predator a lot of them can only use information against you if you go out here and provide it to them early. And I ran into that when I was working at the City College of New York, and I innocently told my coworker about publishing the first ISIS book back in 2002. And I thought it didn't really mean anything back when I told them in April, but by the time September rolled around and my performance evaluation came up, my boss, the professor of the library, was talking about how he was looking for somebody with a sales and customer service background. So I don't really like to talk too much about things going on personally because some workplace predators, like the coworker I was working with, can take that information and use it to one, go out here and gossip, and then two, go out here and try to use it against you to prevent you from going out here and advancing. So if I play my cards close to the vest as related to things going on in my personal life, this prevents people from having information they can go out here and try to use against me and try to use things like my personal information as leverage to gain an advantage over a situation. Because one of the things this quiet guy understands is that when I'm on the job, I am competing with my coworkers and some of these coworkers they are not really thinking about competing in a fair fashion 
where they go out here and bring their best work to the table. No, some of these people are looking for an extra advantage and that extra advantage they're looking for is for a person to go out here and volunteer some information they can go out here and use against you. So that's another reason why I am quiet on the job. And another reason why I'm quiet on the job is because sometimes you run into other workplace predators like some females out here who will go out here looking to go out here and find some personal information so they can have a way to get some leverage for themselves. Because some females on the job, they look to get personal with a man and they look to get personal with a man because they have ulterior motives. And some of these females, they will start trying to delve into your personal life, asking you if you've got a girlfriend or if you're married because they want to go out here and get some leverage so they can start talking about things like get like personal stuff like their boyfriends or even sexual encounters where they will talk about things they have done with their boyfriends or their husbands and that's a crop test that this woman is pulling because if you go out here and start talking about your personal life as related to your relationships or your sex life what that woman will do is take that information run down to human resources and then make a claim of sexual harassment and because she can you've gone out here and volunteered that information in what you thought was an innocent conversation what will happen is you can wind up getting written up for sexual harassment getting suspended and losing two weeks pay for sexual harassment or getting terminated all because you innocently went along with this woman who sat there and talked about how she was getting um, boned at the club and then you wound up volunteering a story about a sexual encounter you had and then this leads to her having the ammunition to go down to HR and say you sexually harassed her because some of these women on the job again they are competing with you and because they are competing with you what they will do is try to eliminate the competition by making a statement saying oh you sexually harassed them when you just were having a conversation with them and some of these women they will try to take conversations into places that are sexual or they will try to take conversations into things that are personal because women are always looking to get social and they are always looking to get social and they're to getting an advantage on a man in a workplace and when a man is silent that shuts down a lot of their opportunities to get information and that's one of the things that makes a lot of those people uncomfortable because they cannot get me the information to get leverage on a guy and then have that leverage to take advantage of that man in the workplace. And that's another reason why I stay silent on the job is because I know it's a chess game and I know that it's best to stay silent until you know who all the players are on the board. Because when you're at a job, it's a game of chess and you're playing a game of chess for your survival because when you're on a job you are not just working to be able to take care of yourself you're working to compete against other people and some again some of these people do not have your best interests at heart and some of these people who you're working with they are working against you they are working to get you fired behind the scenes and if you don't really know who the players are on the board you can easily get checkmated by one of these workplace predators and one of the best ways to try to keep these guys from checkmating you is to remain silent on the job now some of these people because they are extremely uncomfortable about the silence they start going out here and making generalizations about 
the way you are. And some of these people, they will sit there and say that you are a possible person who is the potential to participate in workplace violence like a mass shooting. But I can tell you from my three jobs that I have had, I have walked in and walked out on my own terms after leaving. I mean, when I lost my job at AmeriCorps, I just left and moved on. When I lost the job at a law firm in 2002, I just left and walked on. And when I lost my job at the City College of New York, I left and moved on. And I was not thinking about doing harm to any former co-workers, and I wasn't thinking about going out here and planning any sort of workplace violence. No, I was just thinking about moving my life forward and trying to make strategies to get to the next job. Because for me, when I go to a job, it is all about business and nothing is ever personal. But the great irony is, is because some of these people wanted me to get personal on a job, this is where they started to have issues with me. And they don't really understand that the quiet guy, he just wants to come in and do his job. He wants to come in and make sure his work is the best it can possibly be. Because in, when he's going to work, he's not looking to make friends in business because he understands there are no friends in business. When you are in a work environment, you are hired to take care of business, you are hired to make your employer money, and you are hired there to be productive. But some people, they because they're insecure, they, want, they need to be friends with everyone in order to feel comfortable on the job. But what they don't understand is the workplace was never designed to be a comfortable place. It was never designed to be a place for being warm and friendly, and it was a place designed for competition. And if you're not about competition, then you're not going to be an effective worker because you're too busy getting emotionally connected to people to understand that you need people on the job who can go out here and produce results. But a lot of people to these days they want to be your friend at the job, and then when they have friends at the job and the friends are screwing up, things aren't getting done, and then they want to go out here and create these covert contracts where they get a workplace simp to do their work for them while their comfortable friends don't go out here and do their best. Because for me, being uncomfortable at the job means I'm focused on competing, and when I'm focused on competing, then I'm able to perform. Because if I'm hired to do tasks and meet goals, then I'd rather focus on those goals. And a guy who's trying to be my friend, as I see it, they are the ones with the ulterior motive because their whole reason for being my friend is to create covert contracts where I can do extra work for them and clean up messes that they've made and then they get the credit and stay on a job that they're not doing their best at. So a lot of times when I look at these guys who want to call my, themselves being my friend on the job and being social, I know that they are the ones with the real ulterior motive and they are the ones looking to find somebody who will give them extra, give them freebies and cover for them and that's not the way it should be in a good workplace. In a good workplace, everybody pulls their own weight and everybody does what they were paid to do. I mean, if I'm paid to perform a certain amount of tasks, then that's what I'm paid for and that's what I'm going to do. But I'm not here to be anybody's friend. And that's the big problem I see it with today's workplace because a professional, yes, they have good interpersonal skills, but they understand that there's a place for talking and there's a place to talk about certain things. And a quiet guy, he understands that, yes, I'm going to talk when I'm talking to people at work, but we're going to talk all about business and not get personal because in today's modern workplace, in this dark era of Me Too, a man cannot get personal with people on the job, especially females, because 
that can lead to him having to deal with an allegation of sexual harassment, an allegation that could cost that man his career, his professional reputation, and prevent him from ever being able to make a living in certain industries, all based on an allegation. So, in so most men like myself, yes, we, we know where we can be social, and we'll be very social in places outside of work. At home, I'm a very social person, but I'm not going to get that social on the job because that's going to get me into trouble. Because you, in today, again, in today's era of Me Too, saying the, the most innocent things can get a man possibly written up at the minimum, suspended or terminated or even arrested. So a man today has no real incentive to get social on the job and that's why you're seeing guys like myself becoming more quiet on the job because just saying the wrong thing can cost them practically everything and that's why so many men are being silent on the job and that's why I was a quiet man on the job for many years because I would just come into a workplace and I want to take a minute to assess things as related to the workplace. I want to take a minute to learn about the policies and the techniques that are done on the job and the management style. And you can't really learn anything if you're sitting there going back and forth with different coworkers and trying to be friendly with people. You, you need a minute to learn a, the, just the basics about the job and the office. And that takes anywhere from 90 to 180 days at best. But so many people, they want to just rush up and try to be your friend. But they don't understand. You don't even know if you're going to be staying in this job that long. And that was some things that the people don't really understand. They don't understand people. Some people do not go out here and connect with people instantly, especially a lot of people with more introverts and struggle with anxiety. They don't. We don't really just jump up and just want to rush in to get to know people like that because we know that people who rush up on you like that, they usually have an ulterior motive in some cases. And some people, they just aren't genuine because they're just rushing up to you. So that's something that a lot of people don't understand about a quiet guy like me is that I don't really, I look at people suspicious who just rush up on you and try to get personal real fast because I'm, I just came into this workplace and I'm getting started. I don't know you like that and I need to take some time to get to know you because the guy rushing up to me, he might have something to hide and he's using this facade to go out here and present to, to people. So I've run into that with a lot of workplace manginas that they'll put on this nice friendly face and then they'll be stabbing you in the back. So. I don't know you like that, and I don't even know if I'm going to be in this job that long, so I cannot go out here and talk about being friends with people when I need to start focusing on business, and I need to start thinking about other things that are going on. Like, for example, in my own personal life, if I was to get another job someplace, I would be pr pretty much thinking about how what I'm going to do in trying to stay in this job. And I'm also thinking about how I'm going to be able to pay bills or how I'm going to be able to do long-term things, hopefully, like possibly finally getting started on laying out a retirement plan. Because a lot of people, they just think, oh, he's not talking, but he's not talking because he's got a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of quiet guys, they've got a lot of stuff going on. As related to things some things are in their personal life other things are related to their business I know for myself I have a lot of things going on as related to trying to map out a plan for trying to finally get my life started and I also have things I'm trying to map out as related to long-term things like retirement or trying to map out things like how I'm going to be able to pay bills for the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months. I'm thinking about more important details, but a lot of people, they want you to just come up and get personal with them, but you're trying to work out 
all sorts of business. And again, they think, oh, you've got some ulterior motive or you're planning something sinister like some sort of workplace violence. But in most cases, I was never thinking about planning any sort of workplace violence. I was thinking about trying to get through a day and I was trying to think about how long I would be possibly be able to stay here. So I'm not really thinking what they're thinking, which is, oh, he's thinking about doing some sort of sinister. It's like, no, you're, the thing is that a lot of people, they nest in a workplace and because they nest in a workplace, they get a routine and they don't understand that this person, they're trying to adjust to a major change because when you start a job, it's a major change to your life and you're not looking to really get too close to people until you know you can get settled. And a lot of people, they think that the quiet guy is not um, thinking about the thing about doing some sort of dangerous thing. But the whole thing is you're just trying to adjust. You're just trying to settle and you're trying to see where your life is going to go. And sometimes it's better not to connect with people because if you connect, because if things don't work out, there's no connections there. And if there's no connections there, you can leave without having to deal with a lot of emotional pain. And this is another thing people don't understand about the quiet guy is sometimes you just don't want to deal with the emotional pain of having to leave a workplace and sever connections with people because that's another thing people aren't understanding is when you leave a job, again, it's, it's a very painful thing on its own when you're by yourself, but when you have a bunch of people, it's also like a grieving process and it hurts to have to deal with having to sever a lot of connections. So it's a lot easier to go out here and walk away from a job when you don't have to deal with a lot of different people, especially if you don't know if that job is going to last that long because a lot of these jobs, they don't really last that long. So people, they don't understand why the guy is quiet. And the reason why the guy is quiet is because there's a lot going on. I mean, you don't know if you're going to stay in this job. You don't know how these people are going to be. You don't know if you're dealing with a group of workplace predators. And you don't know if things are going to work out. And you're just trying to work out how you're going to be able to survive in the next couple of coming months. And until you can get settled, then you can start connecting with people. It's like you're just coming in and you're just trying to figure out where things are going with you. And then once you figure it out, then maybe possibly you can form relationships with other people. And this is what some people don't understand about the quiet guy. The quiet guy is still trying to figure out where things are going to go with him. And then once he figures out where things are going to go with him and when things get stable, then he can start thinking about getting social and then he can start understanding who to deal with on the chessboard and who will help him be able to win the game of life where he can start moving his life forward because that's a lot of things that people aren't really thinking about about the quiet guy. They don't understand why he's talking and the reason why he's not talking is because he doesn't know if he can trust the people around him and if he doesn't know if he can trust the people then he doesn't know if he can share plans with him for the future. So a lot of people they, they, they think that oh the quiet guy is this violent guy who's going to go out here and do harm on the job if things don't go his way but that's never been the case with me in all three cases where I lost jobs I just got up and walked away and then after I walked away I just started working on some of my side hustles like the SJS direct imprint and then doing things like eBay sales here and there and started things like this YouTube channel but a lot of people they come up with generalizations oh the quiet guy is gonna come back and do harm to others but I, I have no interest in doing harm to others all I want to do is improve myself and I always wanted an opportunity to prove myself at one of these jobs and show people what I could do on the job but I never got that opportunity but I don't want to go out here and do harm to others all I want to do is build something for myself and I want to go out here and again show some employers that I can go out here and do something um, 
as related to a quality job, but it's hard to show somebody something that they don't want to see because they come up with these generalizations, oh, you're the quiet guy, you're going to go out here and have some sort of sinister plan, but there is no sinister plan. The thing is that you're not trying to talk to too many people because you don't want to have to deal with that emotional pain of having to leave another work environment, leave another group of people, and then wind up having to deal with all of that emotional pain in addition to the stresses you already have to deal with as related to the previous struggles you've had on the job and the other personal issues you're trying to work out as related to getting your life in order, getting your stuff together, and getting yourself on a point where you can start moving your life forward. And this is something some people really don't understand. They think, oh, the quiet guy is just some sort of evil guy at the job who's, again, planning some sort of violent event. But no, the only plans I was ever making and still am trying to make is getting my life in order and getting things together so that I can get my life started and be able to start a routine towards building something of substance out here. I'm just hoping some people get some understanding about the quiet guy at the job. The quiet guy at the job is not the person looking to do harm to anyone. I mean, I myself was never looking to do harm to anyone. All I wanted to do was just go take care of business at work, mind my business, and then go home. And this is something people don't really understand because so many people in today's workplace, they want to be friends about business. And the only way they feel that they can go out here and take care of business is if they can get into your business. Now, if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwares, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam, The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam, The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today.